Hello guys, it is MNFF here, back with another video, and today we're going to actually be restoring this vintage play art locomotive. It does run, but as you can hear, it's very, 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 very loud. Um, I have... A lot of trains that this came in came with two, and the other one I'm restoring off camera, it's just for a personal project. So it'd basically be the same um, method as this. So I'm gonna start by unscrewing this big old screw on the bottom, which is very, very tight. And I will say that mate, the way these play art locomotives are made made ugh, i cannot speak the way these play art locomotives are made heavily reminds me of how river Aussie made locomotives um i will say though these are definitely inspired by german locomotives oh dear well that's just lovely mm. Definitely grab a few key tips for that. Give myself the only puddle of purple alcohol to dip in. So we're just going to start by cleaning this all off. Obviously, this has been opened before because there is electrical tape around the motor and resoldered contacts. If someone has been through with this locomotive before, most likely they got it in a set as a kid and oh dear, just threw the, co the cotton swab at the freaking camera. Got this as a kid and decided to fix it or we're a kid and it stopped working and fixed it the best way that it knew how to and i will say electrical tape isn't the worst of all ways i mean there's definitely better ways but i think i'm gonna actually leave that electrical tape just as part of the locomotive for surprise if someone else comes to own this locomotive in the future. All right, so I have a light. Definitely feels like these aren't quartered right, but they are, so might just, might just be a bit wobbly. Um, yeah, so what we're gonna do is actually flip it over there. So a gear right there. I'm just gonna make sure I get a good bit of grease on that. Actually, I have a nine volt, so I can put as much in here as possible. You want to get a good bit of grease in here because you have plastic running on metal. So, this is my method. Just put on a little rotate the wheels and do that until you start seeing your old ge grease, the grease you put on originally, run back through the locomotive. Oh. Did my 9 volt die? Me, I have a set of two others. Let's see. Oh, just lost contact for a second. So that means I'm definitely going to have to clean off these wheels. Now I'm really 
just spraying it in the breeze. Making sure it gets into that dry setup. Already, it is a lot quieter with just that notification. Um, the contact is actually really good. I'm not seeing a lot of issues considering this is an O4O. Okay, so what we're also going to do is actually put a bit of grease down. Oil, I should say. Down here. And I'm also going to put a good bit of grease on all moving joints in the running gear. And the reason why you do that is a lot of the time, the actually noisy part of the locomotive turns out to be the running gear. This old running gear typically metal and metal rubbing against metal does make a good bit of noise. Now I'm just running it around the track. Looks good. Um, hmm. For reference, this is the other the chassis of the other play art locomotive. And as you can hear, it is a lot quieter than this one. So I'm thinking what I might have to do is take off running plate one because I am gonna have to replace these couplings I'm using hook and loop it's my main form of coupling so I do want to actually do something with this look now I will have to replace these couplings and second off because Obviously, there is a bit of an issue on the inside somewhere. Um, taking off the bottom of these play art locomotives is some of a challenge. I will say that. So your valve gear seems to be stuck. Well, my valve gear seems to be stuck on. Ideal. All right. Now I can see inside. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a bit of oil on bearings for the wheels because this is what it looks like. Heavily there is a set of bearings in this locomotive. Also taking off the old horn hook couplers. Yeah, right. Slide that back down onto the Wobble 
so let's see what that is. On the other one, the wheels had become, yeah, it's the same as this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a vise and just clamp the wheels until they're straight. All right, so wheels have now been clamped. Not wobbling as much. When I go in, when I go higher speeds, it makes a very odd sound. Exact a knife well, contact back, hopefully get off whatever is making that horrid sound. Now that I hear it, it sounds like a train whistle. Quite funny. Second best option, which is what I have invented, which I call cleaning the contact with oil. Obviously, something's not right with that. So what we do is we put the little bit on its sides or prop it up so you can see what's happening beneath when it does makes that sound. I don't know what that is. That's odd. Yeah, different results. Odd. Very odd. Um, the bad thing is there doesn't appear to be a way. to take out the motor to see if it is the motor. I've taken off the electrical tape now. Throw that away, I'll probably replace it. Um, hmm. Sounds like the contacts are scraping on this. If I look at 
contacts on this one, I don't see something like that, so I don't know. So I'm gonna have to put with this one. Very simple, I do not know what is happening. Boom. All right, one last thing, which is bending these contacts flat a bit. Contacts are now bent flat. Um, hmm. Still having the same issue. Let's take a look inside the mirror, I guess. Oh dear. Dropping stuff. So how I'm gonna look inside this motor is there's two tabs here. I'm just gonna splay them apart or out. Now I remember why I didn't want to look at this motor. Um better sized flat head. Hmm. All right. Tops off. I'm not seeing much in the way of anything bad, so I don't know. Clean off the commentator. Yeah, I don't know. One thing I do admire about whoever made these motors was they were thinking about opening them up to um to maintenance them, which allow you to really easily take apart and put together these motors.
side. Two sides, all right. And basically what I've done is there's, I've put the two brushes around a little post there's these holes right over that, which if you push down, it pops the brush up over the post and into place to allow you to easily have to move that to Alright, so what I'm thinking is this worm gear here has been pushed in. And that might be the issue. So Hopefully, still having that issue. Hmm. <laughs> well, I do not know what it's playing this poor little knife. The other one works very well. So, I'll probably mess around with it off camera, but yeah, it's been a long video. I don't think I'm gonna record for too much longer, so. But what we are definitely gonna do is actually take this shell and repaint it and I want this to be a small mountain locomotive I guess logging locomotive something like I don't know but we'll probably paint it in the paint scheme of an old timer and probably will have a tender which will make same way I make some of my other train cars using the same chassis as the European train cars. So it'll be a tender, but for example, it'll be as long as the locomotive stand. It'll be something like put this on the rails, and then it'll be something like that, which I don't think it'll look too bad. Definitely gonna have to modify the cab of the locomotive. But yeah, hope y'all enjoyed, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!